Geometry Notes tutorial today I want to show you how you can make this dynamic paint thread effect as you know it from dynamic paint you can do it with GeoNotes now with the new version 3.5 simulation notes uh, you can download this from the branch simulation notes I don't want to waste your time let's get right started so I start with a brand new file here and I'm gonna just turn on my screencast keys so you see what I'm typing here. I think this is a big help. I also like this if a tutorial does it. And then we go straight to Geo Notes. And here we're gonna add a grid and it should have some resolution. So we start with 200 here. And then we're gonna add uh, simulation nodes and we first should add the output and then we add the simulation input. Basically what the simulation does, it loops here. It's a loop because the geo node, the geometry which goes out here comes here in back again. You can see this pretty easily if we uh, add here a timeline. And if you run this and you make example given just the set position and you give here a very low that offset, then you will see it is moving up because it's coming here up here and the up moved grid comes in here again and then gets the new offset again. And so it is a loop that's great and you can do a lot of great things with it. So with this loop, we're going to do what? We're going to first add a material, so we see something. So I say set material, I take the default material here and I make up, open up another window here and I go to shader editor and I'm going to take an attribute and this attribute I call cal and I connect these with my color. So we have a color view, and if I change this here to material preview, we have a color in our scene. I close this shader editor again, and now of course we have to save these somewhere. So we take a store named attribute, we call change this to color, and maybe let's take a red color. And if we save this example given here, and if we run it, we see there was nothing because we didn't name it. So name it color. You see, it's getting wet. That's great. Uh, now we want, of course, only store this to red under certain conditions, and the condition is proximity to a sphere. So we add a UV sphere here, which is uh, quite big. So I go to edit mode, scale it down a lot and move it a little bit to the side. And now I'm gonna animate this and I press here this auto key and I press G, shift, shift Z and then tap to, oh, I have to first start the animation, then G, shift that, and then I move this here all around the nice grid and I stop it. Then I can easily delete the keyframes here by box selecting these. And I say X, delete, and I box selecting these, and I say G, move them to the start, and if I now play, you see I have my moving sphere here, which is great. This is exactly what I wanted. Now I want the proximity to this sphere to use it. So I'm going to pin this geometry node to here so I don't lose it. I just drag the sphere right in here and change to relative. That's important. And then I want the proximity so I add a proximity node here and the proximity to this geometry if it is lower than a certain value. So I add 
a math node here and I say less than of course the distance and I take a very very low value here and then I want to set the color to red so I use here a mix color node so mix can now mix colors and the less than is my factor and I'm gonna change this here to real white so I just choose one and this here I change to a real wet so everything to zero but wet to one and then I store this result here in my color attribute and I'm gonna connect these guys here and now if I run this I see nothing because is my threshold too low? yeah my threshold was too low but because I want to see something you can of course change this to your liking always remember you only get a change if you go back to frame uh, zero and then you see the change yeah that's good enough for me so now we have the geometry proximity and color change working now we just want to save the color how do we do this so that it doesn't get lost because of course it gets always overwritten because the sphere is moving and then the color attribute is lost and it's very easy you just read out your own attribute again so we read out here our color and of course it's named cow and if this is red so we compare this this is a wrong compare so i try again this is the right one we compare color in this so connect this to the one output and in the other one we compare it with red and if this and it is less than because it was before red then then we keep it so we use a boolean math so it, if both are true it should keep the red color now if it was the red color before but it does uh, not end of course or oh, i'm sorry so now we should oh don't know when i did this this was wrongly plugged in so now it should work i don't know when this happened because i wasn't aware of but i had this connected here this was wrong of course and we need an r connection so this is then our factor and if we plug this in here you see the value keeps there and this is what we want of course the movement is a little bit fast here but you get the idea if you make it slower um, this animation will look better so we can do this by just pressing here as and then we make it slower and you see now it's looking more continuously um well we just fake it by making geometry bigger and bigger and bigger so we add a sphere on every place here so the proximity we calculate here for every sphere we add and we scale also these spheres up so we will get uh, always bigger getting thread here so let's try to do that so firstly we have to add the spheres so we say here uh, join join geometry and by uh, we have to inform what the spheres are and what the grid, what the grid is we don't want to input the grid so we say here store named attribute and we say a boolean and we call this is grid 
and it's true. And we don't want to have to add the sphere, so we say here uh, geometry separate and we separate by is not grid. So we take here the named attribute. Of course it's a boolean and we say is grid. And we take a boolean math node. And because we don't want to take the grid we say not. We plug this in here and we plug this in here. So we just have the sphere which we add later but just let you know what my plan is and now we join this to our sphere here so now of course we want to scale the spheres so we say scale elements but we want only to scale not the grid so we can the same boolean parameter here and we scale just a little bit let's take 1.10 because we took here the separation but we don't want to take the selection we want to take everything selection is just for the join so let's of course what we have to do we have to join the new ball to our loop so that we get on each point here these spheres so let me check this yes we got it and they scale up as we want you see the last step we want to do now we don't want to see these spheres here of course so we just delete them at the end with uh, delete geometry and there we take again everything back so we just say is good not again so we delete everything which is not the grid let's plug this in here oh, material i'm sorry of course in the selection and now you see this this works but it isn't the most performant way and i'm sure there are better ways to do this but it's a working way um, of course you get here a lot of geometry and uh, it's bowing every time because you add a sphere here every time we delete it at the end, but in the loop is uh, more and more geometry, so be a little bit careful about it. I hope you liked the tutorial. Have fun. Bye.